We are now getting multiple reports on the pricing of the RTX 40 series GPUs, and it's looking more aggressive than I think people may have expected given it's Nvidia and their recent pricing history, which indicates that Nvidia might actually be basically admitting that their prices were too high on the 40 series, and rather than cut prices, they are introducing new products similar to the old products, but at a lower price. And some of these could be interpreted as major price cuts over what we uh, previously had available. Now, first of all, uh, where are we getting this information from? I, I found some articles at WCCF Tech and VideoCards.com. Uh, both of them seem to be reporting mainly on a tweet from Megasize GPU, which has been a very reliable source of leaked GPU information in the past as well as these same numbers do seem to line up with prices reported by Moore's Law is Dead, and he claimed, I believe, to have sources within NVIDIA as well as um, board uh, card board manufacturers, th that kind of thing. So, And all these numbers are lining up. That being said, um, there are, you know, there's the possibility that they're wrong. There's also the possibility that NVIDIA could just choose to do something else at the very last minute. We are expecting to get the official announcement 24 hours from the time I'm filming this video. Um, again, the rumor is that we will hear about all of these products, which none of them are even official yet, but we've seen so many leaks by this point, it's like... Come on, it's happening, right? <laughs> um, but uh, again, the expectation is that we find out more about this on um, uh, January 8th um, with a, a NVIDIA announcement. Anyway, so what are we talking about here? So basically, there's these new products, but they have performances rumored to be similar to some old products, but these come in at much more aggressive prices compared to those older products. A mega size GPU actually, I think, summarized the overall idea very well here. He's saying the 4070 Ti Super is basically on par with a 4080 in most of the games. So I would take that as the 4070 Ti Super is not quite as good as a 4080, but it's close enough to be that same basic level of performance. Uh, but wait a second, we're saying that the 4070 Ti Super is going to be a 799 card. The current 4080 is a $1,200 MSRP. So while it sounds like the 4070 Ti Super is not expected to be quite as good as a 4080, it's going to be close enough to give you that general ballpark of performance, but a $400 reduction in the price being asked for it, again, if all of this information from Megasize GPU and a lot of this has been leaked by others as well, ends up coming out to be true. So then where does that put our other cards? Um, well, again, he's saying a similar strategy for the 4070 Super, basically being on par with the 4070 Ti in most games. Now we had some leaked performance numbers that I reported on um, yesterday, uh, which was a Geekbench score. And uh, it was showing the 4070 Super, the 4070, uh, when put up against the 4070 Ti and 4070, it's definitely in between them, but closer to a 4070 Ti than a 4070. In the OpenCL API with, uh, you know, it's a 4% it's a performance difference between the two, which again, you could kind of say is in the same class, in the same ballpark. You would, you'd probably not notice much difference in A-B testing if, if it was just blind testing, right? Again, this is one leaked benchmark claim, so obviously we'll want independent testing and all of that, but going off these leaks as best as we can, it's uh, sounding like, okay, so the 4070 Super is giving you roughly 4070 Ti class performance, but again, the price uh, rumor is that it will be $599. Now, if you look at the comment section of the video I did yesterday talking about those leaked performance numbers, a lot of the comments were pretty pessimistic because at this point we didn't have rumored pricing. And a lot of people were saying, well, come on, it's Nvidia. You've got your 4070 Ti at 800. You've got your 4070 with the $600 MSRP, but it's slipped to 550-ish they're gonna slot the 4070 Super some, somewhere in between. You know, uh, $700, right, $699, at, at least $650. Well, again, we don't have official pricing, but according to this rumor, they would be replacing the original MSRP of the 4070. Now, granted, the 4070 has been selling for closer to 550 recently, and even on Black Friday sales, I've seen it as low as like 520-ish, uh, that type of thing. So. 
Um, really, it's still slotting in above the actual market price of the 4070, but it does look like the original MSRP. But again, if it's offering ballpark performance of the original 4070 Ti non-super, then you're basically taking what was an $800 MSRP card and reducing its MSRP for roughly the same performance by about $200. So it's, again, uh, I think what he's basically saying here, which I would kind of agree with, is NVIDIA's strategy is that they will never actually price cut their products officially. They will launch new products with the same performance at lower prices instead. So you're basically getting a something that's almost like a 4080 for $400 less, and something that's almost a 4070 Ti for $200 less when compared to original MSRPs. Now, granted, again, prices on the actual markets have fluctuated a bit. 4080s have been available closer to 1100, 1150. Um, for a while, you'd seen them drop even to around 1050, but that was before the 4090s skyrocketed in price and everything like that. 4070 Ti's have generally been in like the 780 to $800 range occasionally. I think I may have seen one as low as like 750-ish. So this does look like, again, if this all pans out, some pretty major price cuts. Now, where does that put the 4080 Super though? Because let's actually jump over to, uh, I think videocards.com has the best uh, full-on spec sheet here. And ah, I will become the point. I am the point. <laughs> Pointer. Anyway, um, uh, so the 4080 Super, is apparently having, a, you know, again, MSRP at $1,000, $999. Now, the thing is though, it doesn't have much of a boost in performance if you just look at the specs, right? Compared to our other cards, where the specs uh, are a pretty major performance bump, the 4080 Super does not look like a very major performance bump. The rumor is that it's basically the full AD103 GPU, which only gives you, you know, single digit, per, uh, you know, you know, spec gains, which would probably translate to single digit performance gains, um, which doesn't sound all that exciting other than the fact that you are getting it for $200 less than the original MSRP of the 4080. So effectively, again, a $200 price cut, but this time with a small spec improvement, whereas the other models seem to be, you know, again, 4070 Super, slightly worse than a 4070 Ti, but for $200 less, right? Uh, the 4080 Super sounds like slightly better than a 4080, but for $200 less. But I think that that's, uh, I'm really interested though in then, but what does a 4080 Super look like up against a 4070 Ti Super? If the 4070 Ti Super, you know, how close to the, uh, you know, 40, original 4080 performance is that? And does that leave any room for the original 4080? Uh, so uh, the question also is which of these cards will be, um, you know, replacing their predecessors in the market, or if these will all try to coexist somehow, what would that mean to the original SKU specs? So there's a lot I'd still like to find out about all of this. Again, which of these models are, being, are, are replacements? Are all of them replacements? Are some of them still gonna coexist? There's a lot to see. And what will the actual performance be? And are all of these specs just nonsense and none of this ends up being true? Because again, this is all <laughs> leaks and rumors. At this point, there's so many, you know, uh, you know screenshots of, of actual boxes of, of cards and things like that, that would be shocking if we didn't get the 40 Super Series. But are all of these rumors, especially the pricing and performance, actually gonna be what we end up getting? Now, I think this goes a long way to basically being what the 40 series launches, at least the high-end section of it, um, probably should have been originally if it wanted to generate actual hype and excitement. Uh, also, I'll kind of end by, by by going back to, okay, and, and also how does this, uh, where does this put AMD? So in other words, let's go into like, if this does all end up being true, like like how does that play into the 40 series original launch and, and competitors from AMD, things like that. So I brought up this Reddit post that um, came out around the 40 series when we were starting to get all of the cards launched. And it was trying to summarize people's, uh, I think, disappointment in the, the 40 series versus the 30 series, uh, because this was basically going class by class, and, and it basically calculates the price to performance ratio, where we get the 4090 uh, popping up with a 60% uh, a price to performance improvement over the 3090. So a lot of people were very excited about that card, but the 4080 versus the 3080 uh, was a 
13% worse price to performance. Now it was faster. It was almost 50% faster going by these numbers. I believe these numbers are coming from a 3D Center meta-analysis where they take a whole bunch of reviewers' um, uh, uh, performance numbers and kind of average them all out uh, in a big meta-analysis. So it was pretty accurate numbers here. Um, but basically, uh, it was about 50% faster than a 3080, but its MSRP increased by 72%, giving it actually worse price to performance. And then you had your 4070 Ti coming in, uh, hey, 44% faster than a 3070 Ti with 50% more VRAM, but the MSRP also increased by 33%, making it actually only 8% better from a price to performance ratio standpoint if we go class to class. And if you continue these results, the, the 4070 was only 6% better price to performance because it had 27% better performance, but uh, was 20% 20, 20 more expensive, right? Uh, the 4060 Ti is, uh, again, similar idea. The 4060 actually is 30% better price to performance uh, compared to MSRP because its performance is better and its uh, MSRP was actually reduced, but it did also actually lose VRAM unlike the other specs. So again, it was hard to get super excited about these. Now, this is based on class. There's also one by um, actual price point which maybe looks slightly better for some of them, but not that much. <laughs> anyway, the point is people were disappointed in the 40 series, not because it wasn't off offering performance uplifts versus the previous generation. If you look at the performance column, it was mostly a disappointment because it was, it was uh, any performance increase it was offering was also accompanied by that pricing increase eating into the price to performance generational uplift. And so that's where I think that this is um, potentially very um, uh, you know, kind of correcting the 40 series to be maybe what it would have would have made a really exciting launch, right? If, if these were more like the prices um, that we got. We'll have to see how that goes. The other thing I want to see, th think about is, okay, so where does this leave AMD? And are we gonna have to get more aggressive pricing from them? Because if I pop over here, sorry for the uh, lighter color background, which I can know can be a little bit blinding here. Um, but this is the relative performance chart from uh, Tech Power Up. I like it, not because it's perfectly accurate for every game and every GPU and whatever, uh, but because it has like all the GPUs really easy to support and 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 put as a uh, you know baseline performance, really good for some ballpark figures and looking at a big picture of a lot of GPUs. Well, you have the 7900 XT, which was in rasterized performance, a bit faster than a 4070 Ti, um, but they cost about the same. So now, if we're going to get the 4070 Ti Super coming in at about the same price point but with a jump to performance to maybe catch up or even beat it in rasterized performance, it's already way faster in ray tracing performance, and it has better upscaler like DLSS and better energy efficiency. The, the 7900 XT was riding on the fact that it had 20 gigabytes of VRAM versus the only 12 on the original 4070 Ti, but the 4070 Ti Super, uh, is rumored to be a 16 gigabyte card. Now sure, that's still less than 20, but 16 gigabytes probably enough. The thing about VRAM is if you have enough, it doesn't really matter if you have more. Now in extreme longevity situations, you know, eventually, you know, more is always better, but I think 16, especially if you're playing at 1440p is um, plenty right now, right? So what's that gonna do to 7900 XT pricing? I don't think they can hold similar pricing to the 4070 Ti Super, which, you know, again, if that's around $800, that'd be pretty aggressive. And I think that puts the 7900 XTX potentially in a sticky situation as well. Um, because currently it's extremely close to the rasterized performance of the 4080. If we set that 4080 as the baseline, the 7900 XTX is often single digit performance uh, leader on average when you're not ray tracing, but then loses badly when, when you're doing heavy ray tracing workloads. They're, they're somewhat comparable in lighter ray tracing workloads. But if the 4080 Super is at least a few percent faster than the 4080, then the 7900 XTX probably loses its few percent, uh, you know, rasterized advantage, already was losing in ray tracing performance, and already didn't have as good of an upscaler. And again, it has 24 gigabytes versus 16, but I think for most people, 16's enough. So if you have enough VRAM, um, then maybe it's it that that is that really a selling point at this and again this is more energy efficient as well. So what is that um, what does that do for the 7900 XDX? Currently it could kind of sell when it was up against a $1,200 product, 
but it's been selling for around 950-ish recently. If, if you get a product that is just straight up better other than less VRAM, but probably still has enough VRAM at $1,000, I don't think there's any room for a $950 7900 XDX. So I think its price has to come down or some other product needs to be introduced um, you know, with a, with a better price to performance ratio uh, from AMD if that's gonna sell. And then the last question would be like, what do we do with the 6800 XT? Um, up, up against the 4070 Super. Well, the 6800 XT, sorry, 7800 XT. The 7800 XT has been a pretty strong contender against the original MSRP of $600 on the 4070 because it came in at $500 and for a while was available at that price and was a pretty strong contender. Uh, if the 4070 Super is a pretty major performance bump, uh, coming in at $600, yes, I don't know. Question, the 7800 XT is already uh, lower priced than the 4070 Super, at least at its MSRP. So maybe it'll at least get forced back down to its MSRP. It's been kind of creeping up uh, beyond it lately. Um, and then maybe even need to go down from there. So I'm really curious how the entire GPU market responds to all of this, I guess is what I'm saying. And hopefully tomorrow we'll find out if any of this was actually true or if it was all just wild speculation. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the in the comments section. Uh, are these price points um, where you're you're happy about these now? Uh, if they end up being true, or are these price points still disappointing to you? Would you buy? Have you already bought? Are you just like, well, I'll just wait for the 50 series guys at this point? I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think about all of this. Let me know in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.